PNR BJ IET welcomes all the learners to know about diffraction grating experiment or multiple slit experiment using laser suits. Coming to the objectives and outcomes. To obtain diffraction pattern due to multiple slits or grating using laser suits is the first objective and the second one is to determine the wavelength and grating parameters like resolving power, dispersive power, etc. In addition to the objectives as outcomes, <coughs> learners can able to relate resolving power with number of lines in grating and can gauge the accuracy of their values through percentage error calculation. Moving on to the resources part, the figure on extreme left is the experimental setup for this experiment. If we go into the details, First one is the optical bench with various stands to mount laser source and multiple slits or grating. And the second one is the uh, laser source which is semiconductor laser having wavelength 6500 angstroms. Next important one is grating having 15,000 lines per inch or 12,500 lines per inch. And the next one is the meter scale which is used to measure the distance between source and the screen which is noted as capital D and the distance between a grating and the screen which is noted as capital L. The diffraction pattern which is seen here can be traced out by using a four size sheet with the help of pen or pencil. Why do we learn multiple slit diffraction or grating experiment and what do we learn to know the importance of uh, multiple slit diffraction in our daily life. In addition to the beauty in nature, the known fact is holograms which is used in certificates and the holograms for different security reasons. The interesting one is in 2018, Chen Ethel su suggested 3D sub-diffraction imaging from multiple slit at microscope without image processing to achieve 3D super resolution imaging in a biological specimen. Not only that, the 3D hologram camera is uh, also an application which use the diffraction grating uh, phenomena. There are many applications which use diffraction grating uh, technique in our daily life. Coming to the principle and formula, when the plane waves are incident on the grating or an arrangement of equally spaced parallel narrow vertical slits, they undergo diffraction from alternate bright and dark fringes. Coming to the formula part, we consider the maxima condition and it is d sin theta is equal to m lambda. From that we got these equations. Initially we calculate the theoretical angle of diffraction theta sub x t. And uh, here m is the order of the spectra. Lambda sub x a is the actual wavelength of the source. And d is the width of the slit. And this lambda is the calculated wavelength from the diffraction spectra. And these three are the grating parameters that is delta theta width of the principal maxima, d dispersive power of the grating and r resolving power of the grating. Coming to the theory behind the experiment, we use Fraunhofer diffraction theory and according to the theory, the plane wave friend ww dash is from plane waves and it is incident on the multiple slit. The secondary waves which are in phase with each other and traveling in the instant beam direction forms a zero order maxima or central maxima on the screen and the region uh, which is unaffected on either sides of the central maxima or zero order maxima is uh, due to the increase in uh, destructive interference with the number of uh, slits. As the number of slits increases, destructive interference also increases. And 
the secondary waves which are scattered by the grating with an angle theta interferes constructively to form first and uh, second orders of uh, maxima on the screen and here the path difference existing between the secondary waves can be calculated from this uh, geometry uh, and the path difference is d sin theta so coming to the number of slits diffraction pattern of various slits you can observe clearly here as the number of slits increases the distance between the spots is also increasing here and you can observe one thing as the number of slits increases the sharpness and brightness of the spots also increases and uh, the diffraction spots are well defined in the last case this is because by using more number of slits uh, we get a sharp and bright maxima because of increased constructive interference coming to the diffraction variation of the distance between the uh, central maxima and secondary maxima with respect to the distance between grating and the screen as l increases what is l here l is nothing but the distance between the grating and the screen if l increases the distance between the central maxima and the secondary maxima also increases that means the distance between these two is considered as that means the secondary maxima and the central maxima is considered as x and if x uh, if l increases x also increases so this slide is the diffraction pattern when l is equal to 10 cm and we have also traced out the diffraction pattern at l is equal to 12.5 cm and you can clearly observe the difference between the distance uh, difference between these two diffraction patterns here the central maxima and here the central maxima the distance is less in this uh, photograph and here the distance is more and the next one is the safety measures as usual you shouldn't uh, uh, look directly into the laser source avoid direct contact and while marking out the diffraction pattern you need to take care and the alignment of the source grating and the screen should be symmetric in order to get the appropriate diffraction pattern on the screen coming to the observations initially before doing the experiment we note down the observations uh, here capital d which is the distance between source and the screen is taken as almost 100 centimeters and n is equal to if we use 12500 rating then n is equal to 12500 lpi and if we use 15,000 LPI grating, then N is equal to 15,000 LPI. So the corresponding calculations for D value is taken like this. Uh, one is nothing but the inch, so that we have replaced it as 2.54 in, in terms of centimeters. And then uh, the wavelength of the laser is equal to 6,500 uh, angstroms, and it is written in centimeters here as 10. Uh, 6500 into 10 to the power of minus 8 centimeters. So these are the observations and let us move on to the procedure of doing this experiment. In order to do the experiment, first of all, we need to see that the laser source and the grating element are in the same line. So when this laser source is not falling on the grating element, we can see only one spot on the screen. And when this uh, spot, when this beam is falling on the grating element, then we are going to observe different spots on the screen. This is nothing but the diffraction pattern of the grating. You can see here the central maxima which is very bright when compared to other spots. And in between, on either sides of the central maxima, the space is not affected by the light and it is considered as the minima. And this is first order maxima on either sides of the central maxima. And this is second order maxima. And this is the second order maxima on the right hand side. So first of all, we need to adjust the grating element at one particular distance L. Say at L is equal to 16 centimeters L is equal 
equal to 16 centimeters. I am noting down capital L value. L is equal to 16 centimeters. I am writing the same value on the paper on which we trace the life fraction pattern. So, L is equal to 16 centimeters. On this white paper, I am going to trace out the diffraction pattern of breaking L. So, here I can see the central maxima. So, exactly in the middle of the central maxima, I am going to trace a vertical line and marking it as C which denotes central maxima. On left hand side, I am going to trace out the first order maxima and I am marking it as capital L which represents the left side spot. And here I am tracing out it as the right hand side spot which is nothing but the first order maxima on right side. And I am going to mark it as M is equal to 1. That means for first order, this is the diffraction pattern which is traced here. And for the second order, it is very difficult for me to trace out the entire pattern on the same paper. So, initially, I am going to trace out the right hand side one first and then I am going to trace out the left hand side one on the under the So, for M is equal to 2, this is central maxima C and the right hand side spot that is the secondary maxima, second order maxima sorry, it is R. Then under R I am going to keep the central maxima. This is central maxima of the second order and then this is the spot which is noted as L. So I have noted down the second order. Instead of noting down in a horizontal way, I have split it in order to show the clear picture. So central maxima to right side spot of second order and central maxima to left side spot of the second order. With the help of scale, I am going to draw horizontal lines and measure the distance from central maxima to right side spot as well as central maxima to left side spot. In order to have the distance x, I am going to take the average of these two and then calculate the values. Similarly, for the second order, I am going to trace out, uh, draw the horizontal line and note down the value and here again the horizontal line with the help of the scale note down the value and note down the average value of these two. And then later on we can calculate the values. Yes. After recording the diffraction pattern. So this is the first order m is equal to 1. I have noted b value and l is equal to 16 centimeters. Lambda is equal to 6500 angstroms. The same thing is written here. And uh, C is nothing but the central maxima L R. Now, these are the values already which is shown in the figure. So, it is uh, 5.4 centimeters from uh, central maxima to left hand side spot and the distance from central maxima to right hand side spot is 5.5 centimeters. And uh, again, uh, it is very difficult for me to trace out the entire pattern on the uh, horizontally on the A4 sheet so that I have split it with uh, the first order and the second order. For same L value, I have noted M is equal to 2, say for second order diffraction pattern that is uh, central maxima here and then right side spot that is 14.6 centimeters I got and here the left side spot and the central maxima I got 13.3 centimeters. <coughs> so uh, in order to get the clarity the same thing is written here it is so clear 13.3 centimeters. So uh, by uh, we note down the same uh, values in the tablet form like this for L is equal to 16 centimeters 5.4 centimeters is the left side spot and for the left right side 
that means the central maxima to right side that is 5.5 and i have taken the mean value calculated sin theta and thereby theta sin inverse of this value gives me theta and finally i have calculated lambda value and here also in case of second order again i have calculated uh, the lambda value and i can observe one thing uh, the actual wavelength of the laser source which i have used is 6500 angstroms so it can be written as 6.543 into 10 to the power of uh, 6.500 into 10 to the power of minus 5 cm and here in the same way 6.500 into 10 to the power of minus 5 cm see i have very very less difference uh, between the theoretical values and the practical values so by making use of uh, those formula part which is given in the previous slides i can calculate all the grating parameters and finally in order to check my values i can calculate the percentage error in lambda and if uh, if required i can also calculate the percentage error in theta also because i know theta sub x t values i can calculate theoretically theta sub x t values and thereby i have the practical value i can calculate the percent so that i can calculate the percentage error of uh, uh, theta also so coming to the result uh, the wavelength of the given laser source is determined and then m is equal to 1 the, for, for the first order what is the wavelength for the second order what is the wavelength this is this order uh, this is the result which we note thank you